Today we're going to be talking about technical communication. What is technical communication? It's essentially a discipline that helps people interact with technology and solve complex problems by helping them perform a task, answer a question, or make a decision. You might be thinking of technical communication as just writing manuals and step-by-step -step instructions, but actually it's a lot more than that. Take a minute to look through these types of technical communication. Notice the variety. Don't be fooled by the apparent simplicity of some of these document types. For example, memos and emails can be some of the toughest types of communication to write, depending on the audience and the subject matter. Different types of documents and genres will challenge you in different ways. A 150-page annual report requires an organization and layout skills. It also requires consistency, grammatical correctness, visual design, and data visualization. But a grant requires persuasion, concise writing, and clear portrayal of costs versus benefits, and so forth. The main features of most types of technical communication is that it's reader-centered, accessible and efficient to all audiences, often technical communication is produced in teams of people, and also it might be delivered in paper, but more and more commonly it's delivered digitally. What being a good technical communicator all boils down to is the ability to ensure that the message you intend to convey is the message that is received by the user. Technical communication is a digital and human activity. Technical communicators provide the bridge between complex and technical information and practical applications and consequences for people. Similar to user experience, technical communication is a job role that is fragmented into two main parts the actual end users or readers of the work produced, and understanding the technology needed in order to do their job. Technical communicators are also listeners. SME's communication skills can cause problems for writers. A SME may not have the skills necessary to explain a concept to the technical communicator clearly because sometimes they have such a deep or profound understanding of their own subject matter, it's hard to take a step back and remember how to explain such complex topics to a layperson. Because technical communicators must interview a number of people and SMEs to understand what to produce, they develop excellent listening skills and analysis skills. Those of you interested in pursuing a major, minor, or certification in technical communication should be thinking about the question, is technical communication going away? Why do I ask this question? Well, the traditional view of a technical communicator or a technical writer is someone who produces documentation for products and software. This documentation might include topics like getting started, instructions for use, troubleshooting, and FAQs, and maybe more. As we saw earlier, there are actually many other genres of technical communication other than this type of product documentation. But this type of commercial product documentation is often seen as the main source of employment for technical communicators. Have modern technologies and expectations lessened the need for formal product documentation? Are users more interested in typing in a search bar or reading community-driven forums than reading through a printed manual to find their answer? Is the general public becoming more literate and accustomed to advanced technology, lessening the need for step-by-step -step instruction? Take, for example, the iPhone. For years now, iPhones have been explicitly sold without documentation that explains how to use the product. Apple's philosophy here is that good products shouldn't require documentation, combined with the fact that as smartphones have become more commonplace, users will need less and less technical explanation. And in today's world, young children even start with phones at a very early age, 
which in itself is proof that at least for this product, no documentation is required to get started. What does this mean for technical communicators? Let's think ahead to new and emerging technologies that are not so well understood by the general public, such as machine learning kiosks inside fast food restaurants, artificial intelligence chatware, and screenless interfaces. The implication for technical communicators here is that, in addition to having excellent communication and audience analysis skills, just like they do today, it could be a good idea to specialize in a specific industry or technology. For example, a technical communicator wanting to help write chatbot scripts could study both language as well as natural language processing and artificial intelligence. A writer wanting to work in the field of driverless cars could study both communication and engineering. This movement to specialize within the field of technical communication is not new and is not limited to these images on the slide. If there is a field you've always been interested in, such as marine biology or medicine, think about what those industries' needs for technical communication and see if you can't bring a unique set of skills to the job. Here are some general predictions about the near future. Technical communicators need to prepare for AI and automation, as well as increased digital literacy in the general public. One day, there could be algorithms that look at all the data needed to create a document and find the probability of what the documentation could look like. AI doesn't need to be 100% accurate to pose a threat to technical communicators, just good enough to require light editing or acceptable as they are with a warning to the users that the documentation was written by a computer. Many modern day sports articles, for example, are already written by computer programs. Technical communicators need to prepare for the increased digital literacy in the general public, which we touched on a couple of slides ago. Technical communicators should work to specialize in a specific skill related to their writing. Do more and more technical work. The closer you are to being an expert yourself on a particular topic, the less help you will require from coworkers and or SMEs. Again, think about natural language processing. Chatbots, artificial intelligence, and machine learning are only just getting started. Think about the need for people that are experts in writing these types of scripting languages. And finally, technical communicators will need to be able to prove their value in business terms. I worry if my deliverables are not considered essential, how much job security do I have? Think about the sports articles that are written by a computer that runs for free after it's been coded. Do you have a value that you can articulate to a business that says why they need to keep a human technical communicator on the payroll? So now what do you think about the answer to this question? Well, in truth, the answer is no. As long as specialized advanced technology and processes exist, the need for formal documentation of those technologies, even if only for an expert audience, will never go away. The question is really just a tongue-in-cheek way of bringing up the fact that the need for traditional technical writing documentation, whether printed or digital, is changing. Future technical communicators need to be aware of how the industry is evolving and what they can do to stay relevant and marketable. Additionally, B2B, or business-to-business, -business, user manuals will always continue to exist in their traditional senses. And if you're not interested in becoming a technical communicator, you may have thought that that last section doesn't apply to you at all and that you don't need to pay attention. However, by reflecting on some of the skills we've talked about in this presentation used by technical communicators, such as audience analysis, clear and accurate writing, organization, and more, we can agree that all jobs require some level of technical communication. I can't think of a job where technical communication did not apply in some way, from high school to present. I also can't think of a colleague who would disagree with this statement. So here are some closing thoughts on how you should think of technical communication as it applies to whatever career path you end up choosing. Expect to be evaluated on your communication skills, and know that good communicators are often seen as better employees. There are very few modern jobs, if any, that don't require both written and verbal communication skills. Skills that you learn in a technical communication class will prepare you for life after college, as these skills can be applied across many roles. And with that, we bring the end of our show. Um, thank you for listening, and please contact your instructor if you have any questions.